So right after you watch today's video, I think you're going to want to watch an in-depth video I made on this subject earlier this year. I'll leave a link in the description or you can click the link up in the right hand corner. The news broke this week that the US federal government is getting ready to formally charge a Boeing employee for his role in the MAX disasters. This man of course is Mark Forkner. Forkner is the reason I made the earlier video in the first place. Because rarely in life can you find a criminal that is so reckless and careless as to leave a roadmap of facts all the way back to his own front door. But former Boeing Chief Max test pilot Mark Forkner did just that. In the video, I laid out all of the emails, text messages, and chats where not only does Forkner admit to his deception and lies in regard to his involvement in a massive cover-up that led to the two fatal Max crashes, but he is also so impressed with himself that he will brag about what he called his Jedi mind-tricking skills to anybody and everybody that would listen. So I'm going to update you on today's latest news that the US government appears finally set to bring at least one Boeing employee to justice for their part in the Boeing Max mess. But like I said, for a detailed, in-depth, evidence-filled look, click the video link below. Has justice finally come for Boeing? That's next on Maximus. Greetings everybody, Maximus here with some news I know many of you have been waiting years to hear. Dominic Gates of the Seattle Times reported Friday that federal prosecutors plan to criminally indict Mark Forkner, the former Boeing 737 chief technical pilot who was alleged to have deceived aviation regulators and airlines about the 737 MAX new MCAS system. Bringing Forkner to trial could shed more light on why the flaws in the MAX flight controls that killed 346 people were overlooked during certification. In a 2021 Deferred Prosecution Agreement with the U.S. government that slapped Boeing with a relatively small fine of $244 million, Boeing acknowledged fraud and criminal misconduct during certification of the MAX. The agreement called out Forkner and his deputy pilot Patrick Gustafson as being involved. However, amazingly, it exonerated Boeing senior management by specifically stating that they had not ordered the misconduct. But Forkner's defense is likely to try to deflect blame from him to higher up executives in the MAX program. Internal emails show Forkner felt intense pressure to comply with a program directive to keep costs down and protect the jet's development schedule by ensuring that regulators and airlines perceived the MAX would perform exactly as previous 737 models and that pilots would find little difference, if any, at all. But the truth, of course, would prove otherwise. Forkner left Boeing in 2018, three months before the first Lion Air crash. Forkner did not cooperate with the DOJ investigation and invoked the Fifth Amendment to avoid turning over documents when subpoenaed by federal prosecutors. Forkner eventually left Southwest in 2020. Forkner's main role on the MAX program from the jet's launch in 2011 through its certification in 2017 was to gain approval from the FAA and regulators around the world for the MAX's technical manuals and pilot training on the new airplane. After the two deadly MAX crashes, the U.S. Department of Justice convened the grand jury to investigate allegations that Forkner had misled regulators by deliberately withholding information about the MCAS system that led to both crashes. Subpoenaed by the Justice Department, Boeing turned over a series of emails and shocking instant text messages between Forkner and his deputy test pilot Patrick Gustafson, in which Forkner bragged about how he had Jedi mind-tricked airlines into choosing the minimum pilot training option to avoid the need for extensive pilot training on full-flight simulators that would have made the MAX a more expensive and less competitive option to Airbus's A320neo. To pull that off, Forkner persuaded the FAA in March of 2016 to remove any reference of MCAS from the pilot manuals, arguing that it wasn't necessary because it would only be activated in extreme circumstances, or as he said in an email, way outside of normal flying conditions. Ironically, that September, Boeing gave Forkner and his team a Service Excellence Award for achieving this critical MAX program goal. 
Forkner actively pulled the same so-called Jedi mind tricks with other regulators around the world whom he belittled in private messages as fools and idiots. Tragically, Forkner even convinced Lion Air officials who desperately pleaded with Boeing for more training for their pilots on Mac simulators that this was a difficult and unnecessary training burden for their airline. He then mocked the Indonesian airline representatives for their stupidity in asking for such training and boasted that his efforts to mind trick them had saved Boeing a sick amount of cash. Yet after the first Lion Air Max crash in October of 2018 killing 189 people, Boeing's top executives blamed the pilots for being improperly trained. Then in late 2017, with certification almost complete, Forkner discovered that Boeing had again changed the MCAS software to make it operate at even lower speeds, well within the normal flight range. That's when Forkner famously texted Gustafson, where he admitted, so basically I lied to the regulators. But then to cover himself, he added the word unknowingly parenthetically. Yet amazingly, he didn't inform the FAA or any airlines of the MCAS's change. Pilots still learned nothing about the existence of MCAS until after the second MAX crash of Lion Air Flight JT-610. The deferred prosecution agreement states that Forkner and Gustafson intentionally withheld and concealed from the FAA their knowledge of MCAS's expanded operational scope and indeed Forkner afterwards reiterated to the FAA that all mention of MCAS should indeed be removed from the pilot manuals. So there you have it. It looks like justice may be finally in store for probably the most notorious face of the entire Boeing Max crisis, Mark Forkner. But we all know this didn't happen in a vacuum. There has to be dozens, if not hundreds, of other employees above Forkner who are just as culpable or even more so. Because Forkner was still relatively low on the totem pole, he didn't just decide to go rogue. He was getting his marching orders from managers and executives above him. And those people need to face justice too. Well, that's what I think. How about you? Let me know down below. And before we go, I need to recognize some incredible channel supporters. Dr. G, thank you so much for your 10 cups of virtual coffee. Your kindness is greatly appreciated. And Martin Hollingsworth, five cups from you. Amazing work. Thank you and someone, you as well. And if you would like to help us continue to bring you the best aviation news content we can, you too can support the channel through the Buy Me A Coffee or Merch apps. Links are in the description below. And of course, before you go on your way out, please be sure to subscribe, like, share and ring the bell. And remember, leave the rubber on the runway and your troubles on the ground. And I will see you next time in the air. Yeah, this is Maximus.